Hey everyone, today I'll be showing you how to spawn random tables with random props on top, just like this. So let's get into it. Here we are, as always, in a brand new project. And the first thing we need to do is make sure our plugins are turned on. So under Edit, Plugins, you want to search Procedural and turn on Procedural Content Generation Framework. And it's a good idea to just turn this one on, even though we're not going to be using it, because it does add a few extra nodes to you for the PCG graph. So once you've checked those on, go ahead and restart and we'll get started. So we're going to be using a blueprint for this. We go ahead and make an actor blueprint called it BP tables. And I'm going to immediately make a PCG graph and call it PCG tables. Let's open up the BP tables and I'm going to go ahead and add a C node to get rid of the icon and add a spline. For this spline, I'm going to remove the last point then right click on it. And then I'm going to I'm going to go to the spline generation panel and I'm going to just generate a big square. I just make it quite large, make it 500 units and I'm going to make it a closed loop. So go ahead, check that on. And then I'm going to right click on the point, spline point type linear, and that gets us our big square. And I'm also going to add our PCG graph since I'm here Add the PCG tables right into pile and save. And that's pretty much all we need to do for this guy. So go ahead and close out of this and we can pretty much just drag it in. Of course, we're not going to get anything until we edit this graph. So here we are in brand new graph. And the first thing we're going to do is get our spline data, after which we're going to go ahead and sample it with a spline sampler, plug it in and press D to sample it. And we automatically get our border of our spline. But of course we want the interior. So instead of on spline, we're going to go on, on interior, which gets a lot of points that are quite large. I'm going to go ahead and shrink the border, something like 80. So that way we can see the individual points and they have a, some gaps in between them, which is much easier to visualize. After that, we're going to go ahead and transform the points and we're basically going to offset these randomly. So I'm going to offset them to be negative 100, negative 100 to 100, 100. So now they're quite scrambled in here. And I'm also going to go ahead and rotate them randomly within 360 degrees. So to make it easier to preview this instead of the points, let's go ahead and get a static mesh spawner. Let's plug that in. And in here, I'm going to plug in some tables I got off Megascans. Now, in my case, I have intentionally picked two tables that are roughly the same in style and size, and one that is very, very large. I'm going to show you how to deal with two entirely different shapes. So the way we're going to be doing that is first by tweaking the static mesh spawner with the right settings that we want, and then we're going to split it up between the two. The first thing we want to do is change the mobility in all of these to static because they are technically going to be static objects. They are not going to be movable. So I'm going to unhook this for now and I'm going to get a density noise. If I sample this, you can see they have all been assigned a random value. And then I'm going to do a density filter. And in my case, I have three different types of tables I'm going to be using. So two of them are about the same size and shape, and one of them is different. So what I'm going to do is if it is the last one, so it's going to be like 0.66, about a third, I'm going to do 0.66001 just to make sure it doesn't overlap. Or if it is between zero and 0.66, it will do this. So if I sample both, we get basically both of the full points. So for the regular tables, I'm going to ahead and take this and just duplicate it, and I'm going to remove my very long table and I'm going to plug this in. And you can see that size wise, it's actually pretty good in terms of the size of this bounds to the size of the tables. I can stop sampling that. And then let's go ahead and plug this in. And I'm going to unplug this for now. And I'm going to remove the two tables we already have on top. And now we have the very long table. But of course, if I check out the box for this, well, it does not fit the shape. So what I'm going to do is here, I'm going to search for bounds modifier. I'm going to plug this into our static mesh spawner. I'm going to sample that. And then we're going to tweak the bounds so it'll match better with this table. On X, I'm going to put something like three. Four seems better. The width is pretty good, actually. So this is actually about the correct size of this. So perfect. So I can stop sampling this, plug this in. And we have a very large mess of things, right? We want to stop all this overlap. So the way we do that is by first removing one and then the other. So I want to prioritize, let's say I want to prioritize these longer ones. Okay. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to unhook up this so I can easily visualize that. 
And then after the bounds modifier, I'm going to plug in self pruning, which automatically removes anywhere where they overlap. So as you could see, there's a lot of overlapping ones here. So it has picked one and anything that is overlapping it, it has removed. Now we want to go ahead and plug that in and cut it away from here. To do that, all we need to do is get a difference node. Our source is going to be our density filter up here. And our difference is going to be our self pruning. And once we plug that in, you can see anywhere where it was overlapping is now cut off. Now, of course, it is still overlapping within itself. So let's fix that first. Drag this over to the side. We'll go ahead and just duplicate the self pruning node and just plug in right between the two. So it's gone ahead and pruned itself and it has pruned away from this long table. So we are now left with just a bunch of tables that are randomly assigned. And of course, we can add tweak the density of this if you want more tables or less. So if I do, for example, 60, 40, you can see now we have a lot more tables. So we can control the amount of tables by controlling the spacing of the original spline. So at this point, to go ahead and create points on top, what we're going to need to do is search for array so we can get world array hit query. And we're going to, our collision channel will be static and we're going to trace complex because these are mega scans assets and they do not have collision by default. But of course, if you have collision set up properly on your mesh, you can just turn this off and use the regular collision on your meshes. For us, we're going to use this. And then we're going to get a surface sampler. And at our world ray hit query, we want to turn off ignore self hits. We'll turn that off. So now we have world static, trace complex, ignore world hit, plug this in, and we need to sample these points. So for the bounding, I'm going to use the bounds of this. Now, if I sample this, you're not going to see anything. And you might think, okay, well, the points are too low, right? If I crank this up and maybe crank down the point extents, still nothing. And the reason for that is because if I sample the this, the bounds of this box are technically below. They're below the table. So what I'm going to do is just unhook this real quick. And I'm just going to put in a bounds modifier. And I'm going to crank this up to, let's say, too tall. And I'll sample that. You can see it's, it's on top now. So now it should have something, right? No, there's still one other thing missing. So under the static mesh spawners, in your actual asset, if you scroll down under collision presets, I believe lock all dynamic is the default, but you need to change this to custom because under here you see object type world dynamic, change it to custom and change this to world static and do the same thing for the other one. There you are, I've done it for all of them. And then I move it and update it. You could see it is now getting the points on top. You can see it's it's not actually properly working on this because it's just overlapping the points from here. It's not actually projecting here. It's just projecting everywhere and it happens to also hit these guys. What we're going to do is also set up the bounds for this long piece. To do that, it'll be just the same way we did for this. We can plug this in here. We now have both of these plugged into our bounds modifier, which is raising the height where we can project. And we have a bunch of points. The points are all in a grid. And while this can be okay, and they're slightly off, this could be okay, but I would like to give it a bit more variation if you want. Uh, what we're going to do is transform points, and I'm going to give it a random rotation of 360 degrees. So now they're all randomly rotated, and I'm going to go ahead and also prune them by giving a density noise and then a density filter. So now we're only left with about half of them. That seems a lot better. And now we're going to get a static mesh smarter. And here I'm going to go ahead and populate all of the objects that I just randomly want to populate in here. And again, I'm going to be setting them all to static mobility. So here we go. We have a bunch of random objects on them, but of course they are now intersecting. So let's go ahead and fix that. So if I take a look at the points, the points are quite small, but we have quite larger objects. Now, again, I can go through and split it up as I want. But in this case, I'm just going to make the points larger so they don't intersect. I'm going to just go grab a bounds modifier. Most likely, let's make it something to cover uh, this towel. So that's as our larger piece, maybe three by three. Three by three seems good enough. So I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to self prune 
plug in our static mesh, and there we go. Now we have things on top, books, towels, random objects all on top. And of course, I can have these be on the side or whatever I want. I can transform these, I can split this up. Now there's one last thing that is actually easy to miss when you're doing a test in this kind of scenario, and that is everything seems like it's working fine. We have all our stuff on top, placed on top. It's all looking good. But if I was to set this ground, which is by default unmovable, to static, and then update this, you'll see some of the stuff now gets put onto the ground. We don't want it to be placed on the ground. And it's because it is now projecting also on the ground, which is static. So to combat this, what we want to do is isolate it to the tops. So the way we do that is with a no cult intersection. The order of this does matter. So we're going to plug in self pruning into here and then plug this in. And now basically the next thing we plug into this will be what it needs to overlap in order to actually be in the world. And then what we're going to cut out is the original positions. So these guys right here, this is what we want to tweak. What I'm going to do is grab a transform node and grab two of them immediately. I'm going to plug in both of our static mesh spawners into here. I'm going to sample them and then I'm going to offset the points. A hundred seems good. And then for the other one, again, depending on your setup, these numbers will vary. A hundred on both. A hundred on both might be good. And you can see this one's actually a little bit small. So I'm actually going to tweak the scale on this guy. And looking at these guys, some of these are shorter than others. So I'm actually going to reduce the height to something like 70. And then we're going to take both of these and we're going to merge the points. So now it's all under one node. And then we're going to plug this merge node into the intersection. And you can see it has gone rid of everything that is now on the floor and has only kept things on the tables. So just like that, we can now have the ground be static and we can have the objects now worry free randomly placed on top of them without any kind of intersections anywhere and now we have a far more tables with stuff on them so with that i hope you guys enjoyed it thank you so much for watching hit like if you liked it subscribe if you haven't and i'll see you guys next time take care bye